Good morning. Today we're looking at Section 4, Optimization of Best Fit Curves, out of Chapter 6, Functions of Several Variables, out of Business Calculus with Excel. This section is really an extended example on optimization. When we do trend lines, we ask Excel to find a particular curve out of a family of curves that fits our data well. We now know enough mathematics to make this precise. We refer to best fitting curves as those with the least sum of squares fit. That means if I have a function f of x, for every point x0, y0, I define the error to be f of x0 minus y0, the predicted value minus the actual value. If I take a collection of points, I then square those errors and add them up, and I want the function that minimizes the sum of squares. For this class, we're going to simply note that the least squares fit is the one that's broadly used outside of this class. So this is how people do it in the real world. To be a little more precise, if I do a linear model, then my model is f of x equals mx plus b. And so I'm going to add up for each value of i, mx plus b, that's the predicted value, minus the actual value square it, and then I'll add all of those up. Since the xi's and y's are constants, this is a function in m and b. I have a function in two variables. I can solve it by the methods of this chapter. I can do trend line, or use solver because it's messy, or I simply say, I'm going to fill all of this in and do old-fashioned calculus, multiply it all out, it's a function that has m squared, b squared, linear terms at m and b. It's a quadratic function in m and b. I take the derivatives, set that equal to zero. I can do that. That was done in the section when we talked about best fitting curves. So there's just the prediction. We could do it with trend line or the definition or set it up with calculus where I looked at a case that had three variables multiplied out the error, came up with this function, come up with the partial derivatives, to set them both equal to zero, and get my answer. In practice, that's just going to be too cumbersome, so we're going to use technology instead. But it's worthwhile seeing that the same model, the same idea works with different models. So if I have a quadratic model, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, the sum of squares, I'm going to look at axi squared plus bxi plus c minus yi, square them, and that'll be my sum of squares. This is a function in a, b, and c. Once again, I use solver to get the trend line. With some models, the options in trend line don't work. That's part of why I'm doing this section. So the easiest example to think about is I have money in the bank and money buried under the mattress or buried in the backyard. I don't get any interest on the money that's in the backyard, but the money that I put in the bank, I'm going to have some rate of interest and it'll grow. I do the same kind of thing. I replace my x by xi, compare with y. This gives an error. I square it, and that's going to be a function in a, b, and c. I'll minimize with solver. So this section is doing those kind of examples and trying to find the best fit curve. So if we look at the first example, the first example is three points. These have been well chosen so that all the numbers work out. I do trend line. I get y equals 2x plus 1. And that's the best fitting line defined by if I take any other line, it's going to move it in such a way that I increase the sum of squares. Example 2 in the text does the same idea, but does it not with trend line, but finds it. And so if I picked a different example, or a different line, notice I have a different sum of squares error, and if I had 2, 1, we said that was the best one. My error is down to 56. 
what we're going to say is any choice other than 2 and 1 for the slope and the intercept is going to increase this sum of errors squared, and that means it doesn't fit the line as well. So this is the basic idea of what we're doing. Example 3 did this with hand computations on partial derivatives and finding a critical point. Example 4 is the same kind of idea, except on example 4 I'm looking at a bigger set of numbers and they haven't been chosen to be so nice, so I'm going to look at it and say I want to find a best fit curve. Trend line gives me this curve. I did the sum of squares error and reduced it down, and I'm getting the same slope and the same intercept that I had gotten. Um, and so I'm getting the same results by minimizing the sum of squares errors as I did with trend line. Example 5 is where we look into things that we can't use trend line. This is, I have some money in the bank, I have some money in the mattress, I add them together, and I have years and amounts, and I'd like to find the best fitting curve that best describes the cash amount, the deposit amount, and the rate of interest, or the growth rate, um, and do this same idea. I've got my predicted y is using the x in the formulas. I have my actual y. I look at the error between the two and the sum of squared errors. And as we see with this, if I had tried something else, so notice my error, sum of squared errors is 136. If I instead say, I'm going to start with try $2,000 in the bank and $2,000 under the mattress and $8,000 in the bank at 1.0403% interest. Notice my error has become pretty huge. And the whole idea of this is I'm going to look at the data, do solver. I have it already set up. I'd like to minimize my sum of squared errors by changing the cash amount, the deposit amount, and the rate, and I let it solve. We notice there that Solver did pretty good the first time, but did better the second time, so this gives an idea of what to do with Solver. And again, this section is an extended example on optimization I have this sum of squared errors. I'd like to minimize that. The reason I want to minimize that is it fits the definition of the best fitting curve.